Now, welcome to the third clip yeah, on chapter 13. Uh, in the previous clip, we were looking at the standard deviation of return for stock C. Yeah? Okay, as I was saying, it's just the square root of the variance of returns for stock C. Therefore, you take the square root of 20.29, the variance here, 20.29. Remember this, yeah, percentage square. Therefore, it becomes 4.4044 to 4 decimal points. Yeah? Okay, uh, percent. Okay, because here is percentage squared, and when you take the square root, it becomes percent. Yeah, so this is the answer. Now, this is an index. Yeah, remember standard deviation, you can use variance also, yeah, as a measure of risk. But this one, yeah, uh, standard deviation may be a better measure of risk because uh, the measure is in percentage, yeah, which is similar or in line with the measure for expected return. Yeah, expected return is also in percentage. So, therefore, you can compare, yeah? you can uh, use that uh, side by side. Okay, but if you use variance, okay, this is percentage square. So, uh, you can't compare that side by side with the expected return. Yeah? So, in some ways, uh, standard deviation may be a better measure. But standard deviation, higher the variance, higher the standard deviation. Higher the standard deviation, higher the variance and vice versa. Yeah? Alright, so it means that the stock that has higher standard deviation has higher volatility of return higher fluctuation of return or higher variability of return yeah so the risk is higher is that okay risk meaning the possibility of or the the condition that the return can be higher or lower than the expected return that is what we mean by risk okay the possibility or the chance of the actual return being higher or lower than the expected return, yeah, is what we mean by risk, yeah. So here, higher the standard deviation means higher that possibility, okay. Higher the chance, yeah, of the actual return being higher or lower than the expected return. All right. Therefore, we can compute, yeah, using the same formula. This formula here. This is the uh, formula without expansion. This is the formula with expansion given. Uh, three conditions, yeah, or three scenarios, or three states of the economy. Okay, and that applies also for stock T because there's also three states of the economy for stock T. Yeah, let's go through this. So this is the variance for stock T, variance of return for stock T. So the first uh, component, yeah, this is the first component. There are three components here. Okay, the first component is about the outcome. Okay, uh, under boom, yeah, boom uh, economic state. Okay, when the economy, uh, the state of the economy is boom, yeah. So the possible return is twenty five percent for stock T minus the expected return, which is seventeen point seven percent. You square that. Okay, then you multiply with zero point three. Yeah, that's the first thing. Yeah? Zero point three is the probability of that state occurring. Yeah, or that. Uh, boom yeah occurring so that's 30 percent yeah then you plus with the second condition or the second state which is normal growth 20 percent return that's a possible return under normal growth for stock t minus the expected return which is 17.7 percent you square that then you multiply with 0 0.5 okay then plus 1%, this is the condition, this is the third or the last element here yeah, or component. Uh, this is uh, under recession, yeah. So 1% return for stock T under recession minus 17.7%. Uh, the expected return for stock T, you square that, you multiply with the probability yeah, of recession, which is 0 0.2. You sum all the three components, you get 17.41 percentage square remember this and eh? this is percentage square all right then this is the variance you can write this as 17.41 uh, percentage square or you can write this as 0 0.007441 okay you can also write this in decimal yeah but then it will be 0, 0.00 there are so many zeros there yeah? if you express this in decimal therefore you can express this this way Okay, uh, 74.41 or uh, percentage square or you can write this as 74.41 over 10,000. Okay, which is the same thing, yeah, because percentage square is actually 1 over 10,000. 
Right, then you take the uh, square root of the variance, you get the standard deviation. Yeah, so the standard deviation is 8.6261%. Now, which stock has higher standard deviation? Of course, this is yeah, stock T. It means what? Stock T has higher risk compared to stock C. That's the conclusion. Yeah, so remember when we looked at the expected return, stock T had higher expected return compared to stock C. But at the same time, stock T also has higher risk yeah, because it has higher standard deviation compared to stock C. Okay, and that is quite common. Yeah? Uh, investments that have higher expected return will have higher risk. Okay, so this relationship between risk and return is very important. Yeah? Higher the risk, higher the return. Lower the risk, lower the return. Yeah? So that's an important lesson to keep in mind. Yeah? We will modify this slightly later, yeah? but for now, please remember that. Yeah? Now let's move on to the next slide. Okay, yeah? so uh, this is just the calculation yeah? uh, given uh, in the slide, okay? which gives you the same answer, yeah? more or less the same answer. Careful, yeah? in uh, return can be in percentage. Yeah? This one is in decimal, you can also put that in percentage. Okay. But squaring the percentage, you get percentage square, yeah? as I have explained earlier, or 1 over 10,000. Yeah? Note that the answer here is the same. Yeah? 0 0.002029 is actually 0.2029% okay? or 20.29 percentage square. Okay? So these three are the same. Yeah? They look different, right? but they are the same value. Is that okay? Likewise here. Yeah? You can, if you use decimal all the way here, then you get 0 0.007441, yeah, okay, but you express this in a percentage, it will be 0.7441%, or if you express this in percentage square, it will be 74.41 percentage square, they all mean the same thing, yeah, now standard division is the same, yeah, as I have shown you earlier, all right. Now, this is another example. Yeah, I'm not going to go through this because it is similar. You can try it on your own. The answer is already there okay, in the slide, so we can look at the answer. Yeah? But I'm not going to go through this. The difference here, know the difference here, yeah? right? The difference here is that you have four states. Okay, four states. You have only one stop. Yeah? This is one stop. Okay, just now we had three states. Now you have four states. That's the only difference. Yeah? Otherwise, it's the same. First, you have to compute the expected return, then you compute the variance, then you compute the standard deviation. Yeah, same. Yeah? You just follow the steps we have looked at earlier. Uh, you get the answer. All right, let's move on. Now, we move on to risk and return, but we look at a portfolio of assets. Previously, we looked at single asset. Yeah? Now, we're going to look at a portfolio of assets. Okay, let's continue. Yeah? Now, what is a portfolio? Portfolio is actually a collection of assets. Okay, that means it has to be more than one asset. Yeah? It can be two, three, four, or whatever, yeah? whatever number. Now, an asset's risk and return are important in how they affect the risk and return of the portfolio. So the component asset, yeah? let's say you have five assets in a portfolio, okay, then each asset yeah, is a component of the portfolio, therefore. Each asset's risk and return will affect the risk and return of the portfolio, which is quite obvious. Yeah? All right. The risk return trade off for, for a portfolio is measured by the portfolio's expected return and standard deviation, yeah? just as with individual assets. So we have to compute the expected return and also the standard deviation yeah? for the portfolio as we did for the individual assets in the previous section. Yeah? All right, let's look at that. And before we compute the expected return for our portfolio, we have to come to terms with a new term. Yeah? We have to be familiar with a new term, which is called portfolio weights. Okay, yeah? what is portfolio weights? Portfolio weights is actually the percentage of total portfolio investment made in a particular asset or security. How much of the total investment that you make in a particular asset? That is called the portfolio weights. Don't be misled by the name. Eh? 
says portfolio weights, but it does not refer to the portfolio. Yeah? It refers to the particular asset in the portfolio. Alright, now let's look at this example. Yeah? Suppose you have $15,000 in total. That's your total investment. Yeah? And you have purchased the securities in the following amount. That means you, use, you have used this $15,000. $2,000 to purchase stock C. This is stock C. $3,000 to purchase stock KO. $4,000 to purchase stock INTC. And $6,000 to purchase stock Right, so in total, when you total this up, it will be 15,000. Okay, but how much is invested in C? Okay, 2,000, that is in the absolute amount. But in percentage, what does that mean? Yeah? Percentage it means 2 out of 15, yeah? 2,000 out of 15,000, you get one, uh, 0 0.133. Yeah, or you can just use the one, 0 0.133 is rounding. Yeah? It is better to use the, the uh, fraction 2 or 15. This is exact. Yeah? This is an approximation. Okay, now 3000 over 15,000 is 3 over 15 or 1 over 5. Yeah, 1 over 5 yeah? or 20%. This is exact. Yeah? 20%. Now this is 4 and these are all. Yeah? These are all called portfolio weights. This is the portfolio weight for stock C. This is the portfolio weight for stock KO. This is the portfolio weight for stock INTC. And this is the portfolio weight for BP. Yeah? This is 4 over 15. Okay, we can use that. Yeah? 4 over 15. Okay, then this is 6 over 15, which is equivalent to 2 over 5. Yeah, we can also use 2 over 5 here. Yeah, or 0 0.4. These two are exact. But these two, I think it's best to use the uh, fraction yeah, rather than use the decimal because this is rounded. Okay, now uh, what does that mean? Yeah? Before that, yeah? it means that uh, roughly 13.3% of the investment yeah, is made in stock C. Here, 20% of the investment is made in stock AO. Here, 26.7% is made in stock INTC and 40% of investment is made in stock EP. That is what it means, yeah? this portfolio weights. Alright, now we come to the expected return for the portfolio. Just now we looked at the expected return for a stock. Now we look at the expected return for a portfolio. Now this expected return for a portfolio is here. Okay, expected return for, this is return. P stands, capital P stands for portfolio. Alright, now this is the sum. Now note this, yeah? this is not I anymore, this is called J. Yeah? This is J. J refers to stock or asset. Okay, so there are how many stocks in the portfolio? M stocks. Yeah? It ranges from 1 to M. Okay, now W is the portfolio weight that we have seen in the previous slide. 4 portfolio weight is for a particular stock J okay and this is the expected return for the stock J and yeah? this is the expected return for stock J yeah? okay so this is the expected return component this is one component here yeah? okay then this is the asset in the portfolio and this is the weight of portfolio investment uh, in asset yeah? or the portfolio weight okay in short this is the portfolio weight Okay, you can also find the expected return by finding the portfolio return in each possible state and computing the expected value as we did for individual securities. There are two ways, yeah. This is step one, okay, or this is method one, yeah, and this is method two. This method two we have applied for individual securities or individual stocks or individual assets, yeah. We have done that before, okay, but this is different, yeah. Given the expected return for the, uh, Component stocks, you can compute the expected return for the portfolio, right? Now, let's look at this example here. Consider the portfolio weights computed previously. The individual stocks, yeah, if the individual stocks have the following expected returns, what is the expected return for the portfolio? You are given this. These are the expected returns for the portfolio. You have already computed the weights for the portfolio previously. So you can apply, yeah? the expected return for uh, the portfolio will be the weight for stock 1 
multiplied by the expected return for stock one. 